Hey everyone, welcome back for more Bio 20, week number 11. Here we're going to look at the regulation of genes and their expression. So we're going to listen and explain how prokaryotes and eukaryotes regulate their genes and how they're similar and different. We're also going to look at how molecular biology can explain mitosis and meiosis, although this is really going to be the next part. Just for the sake of saying it, I think this is still a thing that's like, wait, I think I was supposed to delete that. So when we look at prokaryotes, actually not even looking at eukaryotes or prokaryotes or eukaryotes, it's more of a general statement. Genes can't be on all the time because it's kind of a waste and sometimes this is dumb. So like if I were to look at how we develop all the genes that we need to go from a single cell to being you know, the trillions of cells that we are, a lot of those we don't need anymore. So they're only needed for a very short time amount of time and then we need to stop organisms are all the exact same way in that regard so if we look at prokaryotes they quite simply need to turn genes on when they need them and turn them off when they don't they're going to utilize a system called operons this is not for all genes the reason why is operons are going to use signals that turn transcription on or off, but it's only used if the genes are all in a row. So an operon is a series of genes needed for a particular phenotype and we can turn them all on or off at the same time so operons are a massive on or off switch I'm going to show you two examples, the LAC and the TRIP operon. So this one here is what we call the TRIP operon. TRP is tryptophan, but we say TRIP. So tryptophan is a rare amino acid, meaning good luck eating it. So what bacteria will do is they will synthesize tryptophan only if there's no tryptophan. So what that means is we'll turn on the genes to make tryptophan, if there's no tryptophan around. So if there's no tryptophan, we get transcription. That also means if there's tryptophan present, then what we're going to do is stop transcription. And that's what this diagram here is trying to show us. So if there's no tryptophan, RNA polymerase will bind to the promoter, and we get expression. TC means transcription. If there is tryptophan present, however, what tryptophan is going to do is activate a protein that's going to block transcription. And the result is we get no transcription. Why? We have tryptophan. So why make it? Which totally makes sense. If I look at eukaryotes, this is going to be a little bit more complicated. So we actually have varying levels of regulation. So for example, we could have proteins that influence transcription. We call those transcription factors. We could use RNA to destroy mRNA, and there's different versions of that. And we could also change the shape of chromatin. And this is a phenomenon called epigenetics. And all three of these things can interact with each other, and the result is... It's complicated. Our gene expression is far more complicated than prokaryotic gene expression. So, for example, um, if we look at our chromatin, so again, chromatin is just DNA and protein. It's the stuff that makes our chromosomes. There are two different versions of chromatin. One of those is called heterochromatin, and it's known for being compact, which means 
all the enzymes needed for gene expression can't fit in. So heterochromatin is known for no transcription. This is in contrast with euchromatin, which is loose, so it's associated with transcription. So genes ex get expressed during euchromatin, they don't during heterochromatin. What makes you go back and forth between them? We know of some tags, so we can add some little chemical markers. But why they're being added when they are? Great question, we don't know. We also know that there's proteins called transcription factors that can help whether or not we're going to get gene, genes expressed or not. We have different versions, so some of these are called enhancers and some of these are called silencers. And again, they're just there to say express the genes or don't. The way we're going to end all this is with that bit that I said, wait a second, this seems out of place. That is going to be how we can explain Mendel's laws.